thanks very much. So to start with, I'd like to say that I want to live in a world where Jeremy Corbyn walks on a stage and is greeted as if he's a rock star. Yeah. Yeah. better person to be greeted like that than One Direction in the world I'm going to live in. But it seems a lot of people are wrong when they've come in here and spoken about the economy because it seems that it was. There is a group of people who have caused the crisis, that have got all the money, that need to have their books balanced and that is the people who've got the money in this country, the poor. It seems it's the poor who've got it all. We can't build the things that we built a hundred years ago. A hundred years ago we built libraries and schools and we were happy to do so. Now we've got to shut these things down. We're poorer than we were a hundred years ago. And who's got all the money? The poor have taken it, obviously. That's the logic of it. Walk around London, see who's got the money. The poor in their gold sleeping bag. Roll it. Look at them all. People in care homes that are now being shut down. Good for greedy old bastards. Taking all the money. Gambling all their money on stock exchanges while they go up and down the stair lift. Firemen, lollipop ladies. People who are being, having their jobs taken away from them. These are the people, it seems, that have got all the money. And the immigrants, they're the people. They're the people that have to be blamed. Look at them, six of them living in a shed. Rolling in it, they are. This seems to be... This seems to be the, the rule now of how we have to think about immigration. It seems to be the way we have to think about immigration is I'll tell you what happens with immigrants. They run away from Somalia and they walk across Africa, they climb in a barrel, they float to Spain, travel across Europe on the back of a truck in a crate full of pigs, clip to the side of a hovercraft, come over here, then we're supposed to look after these people who aren't prepared to make an effort. <laughs> Election. This is the rule now. We've had the election. We've had that argument. Put up with it. It's finished. That must be what the Conservatives thought. We've won. That's the end of it. And I hope that every one of them is looking now and thinking, oh shit, that's not the end of it, is it? <laughs> you're not even allowed to, we've had the argument, it's finished. If you're relying on a food bank, just whistle as you do so, because it's all finished. You can't complain. If you're being thrown out of your house because it's got a bedroom that isn't being slept in every single night of the week, and you're being thrown out by a man called Ian Duncan Smith, who lives in a... who lives in a mansion that he was given to him, on which he pays no rent, which he was given by a relative, which has eight spare bedrooms, and which I would be very happy to take off him. If that is the case, don't complain about it. It's all finished. That's the end. We've had the election. But the most annoying part of this argument is that one group of people that seems to have accepted this argument is most of the people at the top of the Labour Party that Jeremy is very thankful for. business enough. That seems to be the reason they lost. Maybe that's the case. The place they lost most of all, and most heavily of course, was in Scotland. Maybe that's what happened. Labour went round to the council estates of Glasgow and all the people in the council estates said, I'm not voting for you because you are promising to abolish the non-dom tax evaders and I've got ten of them living in here. <laughs> They're all, all of them want to set up a business and channel their money through the wife's account into the Cayman Islands. We're not voting for you. That presumably is the reason they lost their votes in Scotland. In Brighton, the very marvellous Caroline Lucas, who we heard from. She won overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly, even more than last time, by 7,000 votes. Presumably the reason that people turned away from the Labour Party and went to the Green Party is because the Green Party is more pro-business. That, that must be what happened. And that is why it seems that when you look at the election in that way, you can look around and say this. Where there was an alternative, where there was an alternative that had credibility, 
Where there was an alternative that looked to inspire people, an alternative to the squalid, decrepit, filthy, rotten attitude that says that a tiny handful of people at the top of society have every right to take the lot and to then squander what, left, what there is left and to say to the people at the bottom of society, the 30% that Jeremy was talking about, say 30% of people having 1% of the wealth, that's, that you've got too much. To say to the poor, you've got too much. We want even more. We want the Roman Abramovichs and the Mitchells and the very rich people, the people like Osborne and Cameron, born into tens of millions of pounds of wealth. We think it's not enough that they've got that much. We think they should have more and you should have even less. Where there was an alternative put forward to that squalid attitude, then people did vote for it and people did take it up. The reason that they were not was not because they were too left wing, it's because they didn't inspire people, they didn't make people think, yes, here is an alternative that I can believe in. And that is why the movement has to create that. That's why this is a fantastic day today. They say we've got to win over the middle ground, the Labour Party leaders. And it's true, but the middle ground changes. 30 years ago, if you supported gay marriage, you were an extremist. Now you're an extremist if you don't support it. These conservative, these conservative characters have still come out with the same lines. They can't understand why no one agrees with it anymore. One of them last week, he said, you know, the trouble with gay marriage, it undermines my marriage between me and my wife. And to which anyone normal now thinks, well, what a bloody fragile marriage you must have. <laughs> you really think that? They say it encourages people to be gay, which I doubt. I doubt very much that anyone since the law changed has said, I'm not gay, but I'm going to marry Stan over the road. <laughs> it just seems a shame to wait for changing the law. <laughs> the middle ground has changed because people stood and fought and argued for the changing of the middle ground, they just didn't accept it. And if there is a social movement that we can do, as has happened in Greece, as has happened in Scotland, we can transform society. That is why this social movement, this movement today, this demonstration today, is a huge, inspiring part of changing society. I hope people vote for Jeremy, and I'm sure he would agree with